Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. But the couple openly acknowledged their other children in a statement released through an advisor amid shocking revelations of betrayal between Queen Camilla and King Charles, said to have come from a former advisor himself. Things go from bad to worse with new revelations about the Queen Camilla deception and troubled King Charles relationship. A close aide has revealed that this is more than just a domestic tiff and unpacks entrenched divisions within the gold and purple. The breach between Camilla and Charles rocked the monarchy. If these accusations turn out to be true, this has some pretty big ramifications. Central to all of this treason is a political web, spun out of disagreements and petty beef. One Charles's shade holder extraordinaire, Camilla allegedly now feels peripheral and unloved, privately and publicly. The perceived betrayal is because of a lack of attention and worthiness, and it causes a disturbance that impacts their relationship greatly. It is as appropriate a developing Shakespearean tragedy, now being played out inside the luxurious walls of Buckingham Palace. Camilla and Charles's political rift reportedly began when Cher while Camilla has been seen as quite sensible, she has fought with Charles on important issues, feeling undermined in the way decisions are made at court. This whole narrative is also significant in that it arises now. The source went on to add, Camilla has become downhearted as she feels banished within the royal fold, yet after years of hard work and dedication in the public service sector, she apparently feels undervalued as her opinions are not being recognized, ignored so to speak in a field that requires a high degree of good press. This perception of being cheated unsettles more than just her position, it also diminishes the solidarity that is the fabric of the monarchy. If it does unfold that way, it would represent a significant shift in the dynamic of the royal family and one that could have considerable future consequences. As for a potential rift between Camilla and Charles, that may well point to deeper issues than you'd expect from the marriage of two seventy-something royals. The advisor suggests different ambitions among Song the royals as well. And these stresses have certainly put pressure on Camilla and Charles's relationship, prompting some to ask what this might tell us about the wider problems facing the British monarchy in an age of changing politics and ever closer public gaze. The crack are starting to show. At its core, Camilla's problem may be just the tip of a much larger royal iceberg. The aide goes on to say, but Tom's M.O. is offensive and so is the idea that there were troubles with Prince William and Catherine. William has always had a tortured relationship with Camilla, in large part because he fiercely guarded his dead mother's legacy, and rightly or wrongly, saw Camilla as an enemy of Diana. It causes rankles with a job, marking choice on kids naturally making her the nourisher as opposed to mother of the family and not such a focused individual from another woman in her seventies, Camilla. These tensions are said to be working their way into Camilla's relationship with Charles and complicating the dynamic of the royal family even further, reportedly laying the groundwork for a stormier future. If the monarchy is also losing public support, tearing itself apart through a power struggle and attempting to adapt to modern democracy in this environment, the fallout from these revelations is potentially substantial. In the nearest future, how would this affect the reign of Queen Camilla might her betrayal, as people will no doubt see it, drive even greater rifts and threaten her station and marriage to King Charles? It has been drilled into us by history that family feuds can have far-reaching consequences on the story the public believes. It heavily relies on the optics of unity and stability that the monarchy is supposed to represent. Any kind of discord, especially between the king and queen consort, could be damaging to its image with the people. We would be wrong to underestimate the magnitude of what Camilla has already suffered. When one feels unappreciated and undervalued it can prompt many to acts of extremity. The aide pointed out that if Camilla has been feeling this way for a while, she might begin to push more forcefully and seek to find her place in the royal household. However, this could backfire. If she chooses, her behavior might land her further into the royal wilderness. How Charles would negotiate this prickly dilemma was a major part of the evaluation. As king, he is expected to act with decorum and stability, but as a husband he will face difficulties. 
solidifying his bond with Camilla without completely rebuffing Diana risks him overbalancing, and probably tipping straight off the royal seesaw, especially where William is concerned. Dismiss Camilla's worries entirely and Juan might damage their marriage further. The question then is, what does Camilla want and how badly does she want it? She has been put through the ringer to become queen consort and deserves all our repsect. But she still kept her dignity. Yet the new allegations about Charles suggest a fresh dimension to her relationship with the royal family and how she risks undoing all of this good work. Moreover, claimed tensions with William and Catherine add another layer of complexity. The monarchy's future depends on the younger royals and a serious rift between them and the Queen Dowager would threaten it. Prince William and Kate, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are almost universally popular in the eyes of their fellow countrymen, seen as the model of a modern monarchy. A conflict with Camilla could create a disastrous split rocking the monarchy and placing its future in jeopardy. It is also important when these disclosures are made. The British monarchy needs to operate in an increasingly competitive setting so any internal conflicts may hurt its already fragile position. A rumor of Camilla feeling betrayed would surely lead to a subclass of scrutiny and conversation regarding her very existence and even the state of her matrimony with King Charles. This has the potential to affect public view of the monarchy at large. It also raises serious questions about the future shape of the monarchy, especially with Prince William stepping up to a more central role. Any change in the present mechanisms of the family may have far-reaching implications for his eventual reign. William and Kate will have taken great care to present themselves as the voices of stability and modernity in the royal family. Any hint of discord with Camilla risks offsetting this and setting up a division at the very top of the institution. Whether it proves true this time is not important, what matters, as the headlines about Queen Camilla and King Charles make plain, are the personal and public messes confronting the British monarchy. This is a reminder that the museum may not be as insulated from internal challenges. As one of the most famous families in the world, anything that suggests weakness can quickly turn into a full-blown rumor or topic of conversation. Which begs the question, what now for Camilla? Will she continue to operate in the background now that she feels betrayed and unacknowledged, or will she refuse to be overcome? Not only will those in the royal circle, but a public also eager for what is now an episodic new volume of royal drama, be watching. But if there's one thing to take from the past week, it's that the House of Windsor is still capable of great drama, and that the end remains very much in doubt. This whole Queen Camilla and King Charles saga might just be getting started. In order to understand the salacious details of their feud, we have to look at a number of different perspectives, everything from personal ambition to larger systemic political and social tensions within the British royal family. The new revelations are more than just a royal infidelity. Some beg bigger questions about Camilla, her private desires and the chaos they bring to a monarchy that fights just to keep its table standing. Oh power and personal ambition, we may discuss those themes in terms of Camilla. Although she has become queen consort after years of fighting public condemnation and scrutiny, Camilla is still desperate to be validated and accepted. Does her present feeling that she undervalued by the royal family come from that lack of recognition? If she sees an imbalance of equity, cause for kindness or respect in a critical decision. Camilla might feel the urge to act upon it which begs the question of why her real motivations was. Is she angling for a larger role in crafting the future of the royal family or is she simply trying to protect her good name? But then another scenario presents itself as we consider Camilla's fears inside the palace. The rising power of newer blood notably William and Catherine must be disconcerting for Camilla, 66. With their ever-increasing popularity, she may be even more compelled to assert her position, lest she vanishes from the history books of modern royal myths. Already, the disclosures of tension and bitter recrimination between Camilla and Charles are indicative of even deeper internal cracks within the royal family. We need to accept that the family was not pulling for one another and there were obvious tensions between some of them ranging from differences between generations to conflicting political views or stands on national affairs.
The royal family displays a plethora of diverse opinions. Camilla, using a lifetime of experience and her position in the aristocracy may be trying to reorganize power within the family. If she feels marginalized in central decision-making or distanced from major political events, then perhaps she is trying to assert her power and voice. That could include strategic discussions on the modern role of the monarchy, from diplomacy to navigating the trickiest parts of living with today's intense media glare. His leadership is also thrown into question by the suggestion that Camilla feels cut adrift from important decision-making. Or is this perhaps a tip-off about a change in Charles's leadership style, conductor more decisiveness and less searching out external opinions? Or is he laying groundwork to be the first independent king as in no one his wife included can pull his strings? Moreover, an empathetic inspection of the interplay between Camilla and Charles, William and Catherine is integral in grasping the complexity. Camilla and William have never had a close bond and will most likely continue to keep their distance out of respect for the memory of William's late mother, Princess Diana. On the contrary, circumstances might make Catherine, a young mother and a bridge to modernization within the firm, less likely to do as Camilla wishes if she becomes queen consort. There had been suggestions of potential behind-the-scenes tensions or competition with this younger royal couple that may have contributed to Camilla feeling under the shadow of William and Kate's popular public profile which, in turn, caused strains within her relationship with Charles. And these relationships tug at each other in a way that could, eventually exert pressure on both Camilla's relationship with Charles, especially if he feels impelled by his son's influence, and the royal family itself. As new fan favorites push the popularity of William and Catherine ever skyward, Camilla may feel both overshadowed in every aspect of her life and under siege to defend her position. Abstracting personal associations, this inbuilt contradiction also makes for family rifts within the royal household. At a time when growing public disbelief in the royal family is palpable, any interruption can cause significant damage to their public image. Such example of internal flaw and dissent not only results in questioning the authority and role of the royal house by the ordinary citizens, but also dilute loyalty and support towards such institution. If not managed with the utmost sensitivity, tribal fault lines within the royal family could cast doubts over their ability to hold together and provide stability. Over time, the continued controversy surrounding Camilla could potentially result in reflecting old public responses and even putting a strain on her relationship with Charles, revealing untold weaknesses in their chemistry and her position as part of the royal family that may possibly undermine conclusively outside observers. This might further fuel speculation of their suitability to maintain the unified, steady public image required for support. But with the continuous revelations, the future of the British royal family seems to be on the edge. If Camilla feels isolated or uncared for, she could even become driven to recalibrate her strategy or shift how she sees herself in the royal equation, opening up another realm of possible turf wars that would reign among its various members. Any public provocation over Camilla's unhappiness could also spark a crisis of confidence and stability with the Windsors at an uncertain time for them particularly as their traditional function is under review. They must tread carefully through familial relationships, because any family dispute might then soon become a public fallout damaging their credibility. While Camilla's position differs from the monarchy of darkened eyes, and as the intricate dynamics between Camilla, Charles, William and Catherine unravel, this narrative moves beyond being just another marital discord that once again tests how much uncertainty the British royal family can take while maintaining an illusion of stability. No matter how aggrieved or at a disadvantage the Duchess may be feeling, she will have to walk a fine line as every decision she makes affects not just her relationship with Charles but could also help shape perceptions of the monarchy in years ahead. The current crisis highlights the importance of treading carefully in these developing circumstances. The King Charles III play has taken on a whole new dimension as the king continues to dwindle while Queen Camilla shocked many with her surprise divorce filing that signals trials unseen by the British monarchy in generations. Already under constant public scrutiny, the royal family is in a tumultuous phase. 
The ailing and dying King Charles III is trapped in the midst of an existential health crisis that has thrown the monarchy into unprecedented chaos. On top of it all, Queen Camilla has made the things even more complicated by choosing to start divorce proceedings in the middle of the crisis. There has been speculation, concern and some questions about the future of this monarchy. Doctors have confirmed the severity of King Charles III's condition, provoking national shock. This turn of events is a crushing blow for King Charles, who has been waiting in the wings to ascend the throne as Bonkerso I. 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 McNulty. Apart from whether the elderly king can fulfill his duties or even linger uncertain about how stable the monarchy he heads is going to be. With an elderly monarch, the nation already nervous of change is now having to confront yet more royal progress earlier than it might have expected. And the announcement of King Charles that he was suffering from a deadly disease has rocked Britain and beyond. They have been steeped in British monarchy tradition, but now they are faced with the horrifying prospect that this is no longer enough. Succession cannot be a neat and tidy process, but with King Charles looking less than healthy it is still unsurprising that some people are licking their chops. Or will it be filled by Prince William? What will the public think of that after the death of Queen Elizabeth II? Queen Camilla's decision to file for divorce turns out to be a shocking twist in this unfolding drama. Her father is expected to come together with other senior royals in moments of unity and the Duchess's movab, Essex she knows will be seen as divisive, can only suggest otherwise. Her divorce filing at the time of the king's health crisis has triggered much speculation and controversy. Organizers and her supporters are in a daze, forced to question why she did this when they needed her most. Most sources suggest personal demons such as nerves that have felled the king before then combined with his health struggles to place her in no fit state for battle. Camilla has had a tumultuous relationship with the royals for years. Supporters of the queen see her as a loyal spouse who has stood by Charles through all his tribulations. But underneath this fertile gloss lies whisperings of a marriage that, for all the perkiness it projects, has been far from easy. Finally, Word that Camilla has filed for divorce recently indicates these issues may have now reached a breaking point. Charlotte is likely at a breaking point where the stress of dealing with her role and Charles's health have made coming on difficult for her. Or there may be a Machiavellian reason for her conduct an orchestrated attempt to distance herself from her husband and an institution she believes is on the brink of ruin. Whatever the reasons, Camilla's choice has landed her in hot water and added to a long list of headaches for the royal family forward slash forward slash, and now they must deal with the failing health of the king and the sudden disappearance of the queen. Of course this must be devastating for the family. Prince William, who has already been through much of the worst storms that can hit a family, now faces a situation where he could be about to lose his father and must attempt to keep up public image of a family in crisis. A source claimed Prince Harry may now be feeling more isolated than ever between the emotional turmoil, as he also seems sared from away from the family. But the effect of Harry and Meghan's break from their castle walls appears to be rather larger than mere ordinary square footage, a pretty seismic shift in the fabric and duty within the firm. The consequences for a family that relies so heavily on public perception and unity might be disastrous the long time coming underscore decision off stream measures because is I I underscore 222 rate cycle dot controller underscore 122 underscore content 003. The royal family, which has already been hit by a number of scandals, will not appreciate this at all. The first succession issue, with King Charles not in particularly good health, where will the throne fall when his reign comes to an end? William is getting ready for what he will eventually need to take on his role as king, being the eldest son. But navigating it with the added layer of a family crisis, especially if you are going through a divorce, has plenty of unique challenges. William has to face not only the prospect of ascending to the throne much earlier than expected, but also public relations challenges due to his stepmother. The motives of Camilla remain a mystery, but if she has opted for separation from a health crisis, it is possible that this disenchantment does not seem so new, or it may have been played on her mind. Is she trying to seal her own fate outside of the royal family? Is she looking to challenges down the road for the royal family? 
or is she trying to escape from something that has become intolerable for her personally? Camilla has long been portrayed as a royal outsider, reportedly finding it challenging to break into the firm despite years of dutiful public service and doing her best to win over the British people. The lingering sense of mistrust and bitterness remains. Camilla is still having to work extra hard to overcome the shadow of the Diana era perhaps she has decided that this perpetual fight is no longer worth it, especially with the health of the king continuously depleting and the nebulous future of the monarchy. Or is this a calculated hedge to clean the skirts and dodge what is clearly becoming King Charles the doomed according to reports? Camilla, for one, might simply be biding her time and plotting to ensure she comes out unscathed when the media and public inevitably subject any royal downfall to a piranha-feeding frenzy. Her decision to begin the process of divorce may be an attempt to preempt her being trapped in a sinking relationship when the crisis inevitably arrives. Whether Camilla's motives are pure or not this looks like a big decision for the monarchy. With a divorce announcement, it could likely revive debates over the relevance and staying power of the British royal family in an era when European monarchies are becoming increasingly ceremonial. At a moment when the institution have always tried to maintain a semblance of unity and power, such public infighting could be gravely damaging. It risks dividing public opinion down the middle for skeptics of the monarchy, this will merely be seen as more evidence of an ailing institution struck by family and internecine feuds. As for the die-hard loyalists of the royals, they could be left disillusioned by the lack of cohesion and an airing out of dirty laundry which should have been kept behind closed doors. In addition, the divorce could have legal and financial ramifications for Camilla. She already has some privileges and resources, but a divorce can make all of these change. Abood went on to tell the Post that if Yasmin does indeed become more independent of the royal family, this would also begin to change public opinion of her as the princess now, testing out whether she's going separatist or supporting the king in a crisis. But in all of this, you ask the overriding question, what next for Britain's monarchy? Prince William becomes king in a few years, as it's almost unsafe to mention the name of the King Charles, and it is not certain that Camilla will be able or allowed to hold her title? If Charles's reign is cut short, that will surely heighten the pressure on Prince William to become a king in waiting. William faces the tension of a family tearing apart, Morning Light is an alarming tale about William Jennings Forbes, who also has to figure out what is life going to be like post-transition while five siblings with five different parent sets in yet another shattered grown family complex. The monarchy has to look strong, it has to be resilient if it is going to exist and prosper. But the present turmoil serves as a reminder of just how susceptible and complex the royal family can be. Ill Charles and the Duchess, ailing health, marriage breakdown provide insight to monarchy in turmoil and what it means for royalty. The entire legitimacy of the monarchy will depend upon how the royal family today handle the king's health and Queen S unprecedented actions this evening. The fact that Charles is increasingly frail and Camilla who has filed for divorce gives a picture of a weakened monarchy struggling with internal discontent against public scrutiny. How the royal family manage this unprecedented crisis will shape their future for years to come. Their answers to both the king's battle against health and the queen's subsequent announcement will do a lot in shaping the public opinion towards monarchy. One thing is certain as the British monarchy confronts these dual crises, the future is not assured. The first will have Charles contending with immediate health-related issues that raises questions about the future tone of royal duties, while Camilla's divorce papers cast doubt on family harmony and a public image that is often tenuous at best. But will Camilla be accused of abandoning or pursuing independence when she sues for divorce? The Queen's lesson in damage limitation specter of Diana hangs over embattled royal family will public rally round or turn on royals? Those questions will be answered in the months ahead, and they may determine the most importantly things, for certainly about where the monarchy goes next. Yet it seems the tension is on its way up behind the bland, fortress-style ramps that frame Buckingham Palace. Bitter Queen Camilla who hit back at Jeremy Vine in vague rant identified in Prince William interview for UK, Royal, News, Express. 
William apparently revealed Camilla has made an extremely disparaging remark about the future queen consort in private, leading to a bitter divide between her and Charles. Well known for his cool head and diplomatic ways, William has done something rather more jokey by giving Camilla what one friend described as an equally punchy ultimatum to issue a full public apology or potentially face lasting penalties within the royal family. The contents of exactly what Camilla said is shrouded in mystery, but the fact William so clearly lost his rag suggests they were incredibly offensive. There has been much speculation as to who she may be referring. Others have suggested she was speaking in reference to Princess Catherine, William's wife, among the royal's most beloved and publicly popular figures. Or perhaps Camilla meant William's children, a sad topic as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are so protective over their young brood. Assuming the latter, it is no surprise why William has taken such a clear stance. If anybody were to badmouth his daughters, it would be an unforgivable sin that cannot be said nor looked away. There are parts of a father, especially one in his role as the future King of England, is not allowed to enter and it seems Camilla just crossed over one. This need for urgency is emphasized by the unusual reaction it yielded from William, a sensible family man. William's ultimatum to Camilla shows this cannot be dismissed as a mere misunderstanding or some petty family squabble. Indeed, it shows the deeply rooted resentment and impatience he has when demanding a public apology from Camilla or else face dire consequences. The mediator within the royal family William has issued an ultimatum like never before it shows he refuses to accept certain things, especially if they mean a tarnishing of the honor his wife and children. Yeah he witnessed firsthand what palace politics and betrayal did to Princess Diana, so even Queen Camilla has a line she cannot cross. Trapped in the middle is King Charles, forced to walk a tightrope between holding up his all-important consort and keeping the rest of the royal house united, not to mention ensuring that Queen Consort remains onside herself, no less maintaining a consistent level of continuity for his son's future kingship. The modernity that Charles had in mind for the monarchy is at an impasse. More importantly, any family rose could sully the royal institution. For that inevitably means either supporting Camilla and risking alienating William, or conceding to William and undermining the position of his wife, both are volatile scenarios in Charles' ascension to the throne as well as in the future stability of the crown. William accused the future queen of not wanting an outsider entering her family but it's Camilla's silence that is now raising eyebrows about where she stands. Are her actions feels of pride or principle, or is it a strategic decision she is making? Not speaking out, however, may only alienate more of her family and allow the public to speculate about whether she should have said sorry, and what impact that might have on the royal family in these tricky times. Should Camilla actually have been referring to Catherine or William's children, her silence might well be judged as a sign of contempt that she doesn't see her words as being distasteful or hurtful. That being said, this silence could also be strategic. If you read this as a non-response to the ultimatum, it puts Prince Charles very much between his wife and his heir. If it does, it's a dangerous move that can cost you dearly. Stakes are high beyond a what you can imagine. Conflicts within the royal family are not unheard of, but this particular situation is precarious. Camilla and King Charles, YouTube The Looming War of Camilla vs. William presents an immense danger to the fragile peace King Charles has worked so hard to maintain since becoming king. Royal family watchers will be keeping a keen eye on how Charles reacts to this crisis. Or will he continue to side with Camilla, leaving William even more isolated? Or will he side with his son, putting Camilla's nose out of joint and stirring the pot again in the process? In fact, this episode has further torn asunder the already delicate bonds that hold people within a household together. The spicy video does raise some key questions about how the royal family will move forward. If Charles gets this crisis wrong, we could see the royal family split along public lines, groups forming more clearly aligned with different members. Enacting such a schism would be disastrous especially at this time when the public eye is literally fixed upon it. The result of this incident may also cause strong reactions from the public. Charisma, 
If Charles appears weak or indecisive it would undermine his credibility as a leader on the other hand, if he is too biased in favor of either side, well that just makes matters worse. His acceptance in the public, however, which is already higher than many other members of the royal family's marks could be boosted if he was seen to be stamping his authority on bad behavior, especially if it meant protecting his family. On the other hand it could further damage Camilla's public image and increase the idea, that has been underlined by numerous commentators in Britain, of being a Marmite figure. In addition to that, this ongoing saga has brought to the surface what can be a very complex dynamic between various members of the royal family. In asking for public contrition, William is signaling a change in the way he will deal with Camilla. It sends the most powerful message that, although respect does go both ways in any family relationship and at any level of it, no disrespect to those closest to him will be overlooked by the man. The ultimatum represents nothing less than a potential turning point in his relationship with Camilla and in the way he all but asks to be seen as king to come. If Charles gets this wrong, it could make things even worse and do lasting damage to family relationships. A divisive royal family could not only destabilize internal royal dynamics but may also chip away at wider public trust in the institution. Partly, its purpose is to help ensure the monarchy appears united, stable and undiminished. A public row, especially between the king and queen consort, and future king undermines all of these principles. We know the media will latch onto this, for sure. The British tabloids, relentless in their pursuit of royal scandal, will likely keep this story in the headlines. Each day Charles and Camilla stay silent adds to the rumor mill. Each nuance, each movement, each falling or leaving word will be peeled off and interpreted. It might also change public perceptions of the monarchy. The relevance of the monarchy in the modern age has been a point of growing discussion in recent years. Scandals and fights within their ranks only further energize this conflict, both under increased focus and criticism. Given that, the last thing this family would seem to need is more gossip undermining them and raising questions about their unity or utility. King Charles himself is at a crossroad, but he must choose wisely. That will be a turning point in his leadership and will set off repercussions for the royal family that will last. Yet this is about so much more than family squabbles, it goes to the very heart of the future of the monarchy. The prince has to weigh up the cost for the institution he has spent his entire career preparing himself to lead. Although an apology from Camilla could help soothe immediate hostilities, it may not be enough to get at the root of the current and long-festering problems. However, on the flip side giving Camilla one more solid vote of confidence may only serve to further fuel that particular separatist fire next time there's a schism in the ranks. King Charles reaches a turning point in his reign, and together, the Granthams, both above and below stairs, and the royal family must face the challenge of William and Camilla exposing weakness and playing upon sensibilities that threaten to downset their fragile picture of a perfect monarchy. The resolution to this crisis will not only determine the relationship among family members but will have implications for the future of the British monarchy as well. Can Charles ever hope to be not just a husband but his consort's future regent, or will he be left like Hamlet with wife or the crown? What will the decision do to the monarchy in public terms if he makes it? Between the salacious soap opera, there is no escaping that what's happening now is the most substantial threat faced by the House of Windsor in recent memory. Yet it is important to note that the rift between William and Camilla runs deeper than a careless comment. Instead, it shines a light on an apparent battle for power in the royal family. The British monarchy for its part has long worked with a heavily hierarchical culture of roles and responsibilities. It was only after Queen Elizabeth II died that Charles became king, shuffling the deck in terms of power. Not so many years ago, Camilla was considered a low-rent hussy that nobody would stoop to polite conversation with, all of sudden she has become de facto queen consort requiring the respectful ox-towing every bit as do any monarch. But her public and royal life is on shaky ground she is continually measured by her namesake Diana, Princess of Wales, and now Catherine? which begs the question if Camilla felt she needed to cement her place within the royal family in a more outwardly or inward way, 
especially with William and Catherine coming into their own. William, as the heir apparent, is showing a different leadership style, determined and brusque. The fact he demanded a public apology from Camilla suggests he is not afraid to flex his muscles to protect his family and maintain an unsullied image of the royal family. This is a naked warning that he will not brook any threat to his dominance and reputation. William's ultimatum is also strategic, for it will further assure the UK public that he is ready to take the reins as king in the next several years. And Charles is in a spot, as his wife Camilla does battle with the Queen, and he finds himself or or less caught between the two key power players in royal family dom, with William growing up to be the troller-in-chief. He faces a unique conundrum as a father and understanding what William fears for his family and the husband with the responsibility to shelter Camilla, who stood by him during the darkest period of his life. However, the complexity lies in that Charles is neither just a father or a husband but equally also a monarch, and every decision he makes can in turn impact on the future of his reign and that of the royal family. If Charles sides with Camilla and tells William to sod off, it could further drive a wedge between the generational factions of the royal family, resulting in lasting enmity and besmirching the monarchy. On the other hand, backing William might also ruin you Camilla's crunchy position and any of the inroads she has recently made in shaping her own image and role within the family. But the problem is complicated by our time and its political and social demands, this yearning on his part to make the monarchy more relevant to modern times. But any internal unrest, especially if it should become public, could erode the credibility of the monarchy and its ability to carry out reforms and even question Charles's fitness for kingship. An equally important aspect of this battle is the way in which Camilla, a woman like any other in terms of her blood ties to royalty, now finds herself as one. This came after surviving the horrible naysayers claiming that Camilla would be nothing more than a queen consort in part again why it speaks to unrest or some sense of unease. It could be she is coerced to play a part that has never truly been within her comfort zone. Catherine, though Diana remains much loved by the public scene as a modernizing force among the royal family, she might feel competitive or unappreciated if she does not think her efforts are getting directed attention. Had Camilla been speaking about Catherine or one of William's kids, it could be seen as a likewise defensive measured to prove her strength and protect the turf she has never felt comfortable standing on. This demonstrates the difficulty that royal women have in walking between tradition and individual power. It overshadowed the row between Camilla and William which had highlighted the tangled emotions and intricacies of family dynamics within the firm. William, who lost his mother at a young age, might find it difficult to forgive insults or hurt caused to loved ones as he feels Camilla is responsible. But in the case of Camilla, whose state has been under attack and the victim of stigma within that family for writing all that she's written, may feel like she's already suffered through enough and needs to protect the newfound standing to have a relationship that matters so much for its stability. The tense rapport of William and Camilla, amid the fallout of this feud, underscores a host of intriguing interactions. If Charles fails to bring the sides together, however, that could trigger an internal crisis of major proportions, a public feud could threaten personal relationships and the image of the royal family. The fallout from this spat could be severe and potentially cast a stain on personal relationships between royal family members as they channel into their work and how they are perceived by the public. If Camilla refuses to apologize it would make her look like a divisive figure which in turn can undermine her position as queen consort. It would be a matter of saving his family's name from disgrace if William refused the apology or failed to meet his purpose. It may have set a dangerous precedent for the royals in the long term, as burgeoning feuds could leave parts of society questioning whether they could be successful in maintaining a unified and stable family unit. Those doubts could only beget more questions about the monarchy's place in, and contribution to, modern-day Britain. William and Camilla are about more than just verbal scuffles or ultimatums, but a concept test of leadership, unity and the ability of the royal family to adapt for the new age. The decisions taken in response to this row will not just determine what happens next for the royal family, but could also set the course for the British monarchy as a whole for many years ahead and possibly long after Prince Philip has died. 
The sudden collapse of a shockingly paper-thin episode of King Charles III sadly made the headlines across the UK, leaving many even more anxious about how such a thing might manifest itself if our kingdom is indeed to come. Buckingham Palace aides were stunned at the king toppling over during a royal engagement on his 68th birthday which, inevitably immediately led to concerns for his health. The visible emotion of Prince William upon finding out about his father's illness has ratcheted up the story and left a nation on tenterhooks. The whole country is on tenterhooks because you of the king's unexpected bout of sickness. Internal sources close to the royal family are dropping hints and whispering rumors about the king, whose health details continue to be shrouded in secrecy but whose underlying health problems allegedly are being kept under control on the other side of the palace walls. Questions the palace's own veil of silence do nothing to dispel as they only fuel angst and create uncertainty over whether the king can ever return at all ring out louder. In the middle of this chaos, Prince William becomes the Prince of Wales that is supposed to be graceful and king-like. The man now stands on the precipice of what could surely be an early accession to the throne. For William that shift is a public duty but it means something far more personal. His dramatic tears, at the sight of his father taken suddenly ill, underline the conflict he endures between being a dutiful son and a committed nationalist. A pillar of strength and calm within the monarchy, William is not immune to the emotional burden of his father's condition. As the prospect of his father's passing is something that, for all of his royal upbringing, recasts him here as a human prince. His frustration is evident and an emotional strain shows in him, the toll this uncertainty has taken on him. Then there is the British public, a mixture of sympathy for William yet worry about where that places his monarchy. Speculation over the line of succession and whether Prince William would take the throne sooner was ignited when these events unfolded unexpectedly after King Charles's health scare. The UK is a nation comfortable with transitions of power in the royal family, but even some Republicans are unsettled by the overnight change in circumstances. Nearest to the throne would William who would only take over as king if King Charles is incapacitated before he comes back. The new king would then provide a big change to the monarchy and the country, according to an earlier schedule than many had anticipated. William is a cutting-edge and engaging individual who can better connect with the younger technology and he takes these essential reasons to be able to lead the monarchy into a brand new era. But the rush to make this change driven more by a global health crisis than a carefully orchestrated succession plan comes with pitfalls for William and the wider royal family too. Moreover, the window of it happening is absolutely vitally important. We now seem to be in a time of major transition for the British monarchy, facing questions of its legitimacy amid rapidly changing times. This includes the schemes for modernizing the institution that are put at risk after King Charles shockingly abdicates. And if their succession comes to pass through all this tumult, it could well be a moment of renewal and strength for the monarchy or one of profound instability. In Britain, responses have been more a combination of shock and alarm and curiosity. Others are simply uneasy about yet another changing of the royal guard barely six weeks after the death of Queen Elizabeth II. In the air, there is a profound nervousness about what is to come. William is universally well-rated and seen as prepared for the throne when it comes, but his expected rise to power in the midst of a pandemic is coupled with anxiety and concern. There are worries, as well, about how this may play in the modern media era, when every action, statement and gesture is adopted in real time by millions on social media. The royal family will have to be very careful about how they communicate and act, as their actions can further contribute to the breach of public trust. Any error here would result in lasting effects on the image of the monarchy as well as its relationship with the people of Britain. Meanwhile, some look at it as an opportunity for rebirth. Others feel that a William reign would provide an opportunity to finally drag the monarchy into the 21st century and bring it more in line with current values and attitudes. William, with Catherine the Duchess of Cambridge, has been leading a push to present a more normal and down-to-earth royal family. A commitment to mental health, climate change and social justice among other issues has injected optimism into the idea that they represent a new beginning. 
Here the role of Queen Camilla must not be forgotten amid this crisis. The whole saga centers around Camilla, as King Charles's consort queen yet her reaction, or rather lack of one, has been very muted. Do you do this on purpose? Low profile during uncertainty, a tactic? Ah, but is there more than meets the eye? Camilla has always divided opinion in the royal family. Every move and word is to be watched like a hawk, and harshly judged commonplace. She will prefer to remain discreet in the current crisis, avoiding any action that seeds the storm further. But at the same time, her silence in this case seems to mean that she is unsupportive or unempathetic, qualities the public might want to find in all members of a royal family. If the reports of her King Charles are true, and his health takes a more severe downturn than has been expected to date, that transition period will be compressed in the extreme, making it less surprising that his new successor might allow her optional power to decrease all too much. Camilla must tread carefully the shifting sands of these two images if she is to maintain her role in the firm along with public dignity. That will be what defines her when people look back, potentially being seen as unsupportive or absent at this critical time. The health scare of King Charles and the resulting controversy could have far-reaching implications on the future of the crown. The monarchy's uncertainty over its own future, drawn into sharp relief by the crisis of the moment, conceals deeper doubts about whether it may be able to navigate an ever-changing world. The organization has faced several setbacks in recent years, including scandals and questions from critics over its place in modern society. A crisis in health of this magnitude only contributes more stress. If Prince William accedes to the throne, he would take on a more complicated array of responsibilities. One side will argue for continuity to keep the centuries-old traditions and values of the monarchy. In contrast, a call for rejuvenation, ground up or skin deep or otherwise, will be issued to remake the institution in the image of current mores and those of a multifaceted and constantly evolving society. Balancing these disparate intentions will be no small feat the way the monarchy responds to the crisis will also have an impact on public attitudes. Well maybe a smooth, respectful and transparent transition would provide greater public confidence in the institution? By contrast, a botched transition, characterized by signs of disharmony or disarray, would only deepen pre-existing concerns while stoking demands for reform or even abolition. This is a crisis that quite clearly has grave emotional effect on the royal family. The death of his father would be a personal tragedy, albeit for the future king. Deep down, he's a son trying to come to terms with his father being die, a very heavy load. Prince William's actions in response to this crisis, as both a son and eventual king, could define his public image for years to come, and the public along with even the royal family themselves will be looking out for it carefully. It is equally a very difficult time for other members of the royal family, who feel enormous pressure to stick together and provide mutual support through this situation with grace. With the world watching, any sign of weakness or infighting within the royal family could quickly explode in stories in the tabloids and through public perception. Even as the UK holds its breath waiting for news on King Charles's health, one thing is clear, the monarchy finds itself at a crossroads. But the emergency illness of the king has generated a precarious, tense climate surrounding his reign. But for Prince William, it will also be a time of private sorrow and a test of his readiness to be king. In comparison Catherine who remains quietly upset and seething that they are no longer playing ball probably would feel equally betrayed, but not causing quite the same level of chaos and worry that her husband's stepbrother is. Prince William has drawn a line in the sand over a potential hairy title grab, highlighting an unprecedented schism at the heart of the royal family. The monarchy is in crisis as the British royal family endures increasingly complex dynamics with both Prince William firmly against his brother, Prince Harry, raising fears of King Charles's early death due to poor health. The routes being selected are likely to determine how Europe will actually look for years to come. The royal funeral of their beloved uncle was not only an occasion for the royals to grieve together it was a vital time for Prince William, Prince Harry and King Charles to have the talk. It all centered on Harry's use of his royal title, his money and ongoing role in the royal family. 
This was no backyard conversation, this was something more significant between a family. It was make or break for Harry's links to the royal family and his public image. The trio of presenting royals took on the myriad issues that arose from Harry and Meghan stepping down in the privacy of Buckingham Palace. To add to the tension of it all Claus knew that King Charles was very sick and there was a sense of urgency around the family uniting. Sir, I am a man of my word, Prince William, not Prince Charles. He insisted to Harry that he no longer use his title in public, an order that ultimately helped prompt Buckingham Palace to withdraw all of Harry's titles, a huge blow for the Duke of Sussex. This critical and unavoidable shift, from a royal point of view, had far-reaching emotional repercussions. A bitter reminder of Harry's decisive turn away from the institution that had defined his life. William has been driven to protect the reputation of the monarchy, and that was clearly his intention in ensuring its high standards are maintained. The meeting also discussed how Harry inherited about $8 million from the Queen Mother, bottled with a bunch of hidden clauses around behavior in public and within the firm. The secret clauses illustrate Harry's replacement of the royal household over their fears for what he would possibly do subsequent, and the way that may replicate at the monarchy. If he does not meet these conditions, Harry risks being stripped of his inheritance which is already under severe strain following many boiling relationships. A stark reminder, if ever there were one, that the Queen Mother's influence over how matters unfold with the royals doesn't end when she dies. It is worth noting that King Charles is facing a difficult situation. He is desperate on the one hand to be a caring father who wishes his family together again. On the other hand, he is the reigning monarch of England and fears for maintaining dignity in legacy of a monarchy. This contradictory capacity has consumed him, particularly as the state of his health worsened. Charles is keen to repair his relationship with Harry and rehabilitate the well-being that he longs for in every father. However, the stance of William means that Harry will have to make many compromises in this attempt. The preservation of the monarchy comes first even if it requires hard and painful decisions. To me, Charles is exactly where any parent would fear to be. Even if his desire for reconciliation is genuine, the obstacles to peace are more apparent with each passing day. The question is whether Charles can find a way to marry up his paternal feelings with his expected royal duties or it all gets too much. The potential return to the UK of Meghan Markle has been addressed while titles and inheritance dominate discussions the Duke of Sussex wants to return with her, if it can be proved that parents have a private accommodation for their family. This would also mark a period of separation from the royal family and should be enough to relieve the burden of their presence in Britain. At the same time, this situation only further highlights the ongoing trust issues within the royal family. The demand that Meghan and Harry set up their own household demonstrates that they are not about to be fully welcomed back into the royal fold. The message could not be clearer, you are welcome to visit, but your previous functions, privileges and positions have ended. To me, this is representative of the larger concerns within the royal family around what the Sussexes have in mind and how likely future disruptions are. Not only is Meghan's possible return seen as more than even a homecoming, it brings yet another headache into the quagmire of things. Meanwhile, a lengthy legal row continues over the level of security for Harry and his family during their visits to the UK. After stepping down as senior royals, Harry and Meghan gave up their taxpayer-funded security, creating a bitter legal row. The plans for royal duties to be restructured and the Duchess of Sussex security arrangements are being overseen by Prince William. The delicate task of protecting Harry and his family and accepting their changed royal status is a balancing act. It lays bare a major split Harry, and the royals which has now burst into legal battles and public rancor. Once a taken-for-granted security issue, it is now the steam valve for the wider family feud. Being next in line to the throne, Prince William has a huge job of maintaining the reputation of the monarchy. The decision to refuse to budge from his position on Harry's use of his title and the conditions of inheritance is a sign that he remains determined to protect the integrity of the institution. William is not just following the royal rulebook he is playing the long game in terms of keeping the monarchy as a valid institution going forward.
But in an age when the royal family has seldom been less respected, William knows any whiff of favoritism would risk public trust. Credit to William for this stance, which is about as rock solid as it gets inside these walls. He understands the enormity if the situation and is willing to make some hard decision in order for monarchy to continue. Still, one senses that for him this rankling goes beyond the professional body blow. His brother, that is not ordinary royal stuff between the two of them, it is deeply personal and that carries the kind of heft you can only ever truly understand if you are, yourself, a sibling. The more immediate reality to this is that these always bubbling under tensions in the royal family extend to the inflicting of trauma on those within it. One of those seems to be King Charles, who is said to have his work cut out with trying to act as peacemaker between his sons as well as dealing with his own demons. With worries for his own health, Prince William is bound to be under considerable emotional strain. He is not just a future king but a brother who has seen his relationship with Harry plunged into seemingly irremediable schism. He is weighed down by responsibilities like never before, decisions taken today shaping the course of his family's future. Harry, too, must be feeling the pace, there can be no denying that. Instead of buying Prince Harry the freedom and autonomy he craved, his move to step back from royal duties triggered conflicts that drove him further apart from his kin. If you were a spectator, it's hard not feel that twinge of sadness regarding the situation. Long the touchstone of unity, tradition and decorum, the beleaguered royals are facing internal division, cracking under pressure that could cause their foundation to give way. The emotional burden on all concerned is clear which suggests that there are no easy answers. The next few months are significant, their outcome might decide on where the British monarchy is headed. The Duke of Cambridge's intransigence King Charles wants reproachment Harry distanced from the royal firm these are all defining moments for the House of Windsor. There is a pervasive narrative in place by which the monarchy needs to modernize if it is going to survive in an age such as ours. But the million-dollar question remains, at what cost? The feud between Prince William and Prince Harry, the continued legal struggles, and caveats around Meghan's return paint a family still working out how to live in this complexity, brutal world. Looking back over years devoted to the royal family, it begs the question, what now? But will this tempest, one of a kind, shred the monarchy to pieces or strengthen it more than ever? Or will these internal schisms lead to its downfall? Only time will tell us the answers, but one thing is for sure the decisions of today will repeat in the tens and twenties. The British royal family is at a crossroads as it struggles with the challenges of its present and faces an uncertain future that may determine the very prospects for survival. The Duke's strong stance on his brother's titles and inheritance is a reminder of how deep these troubles go, thus Charles's plan to try to knit up the rifts in his family no matter what. A large weight of the responsibilities is now on top of him, and the decisions he makes can affect their family in profound ways. Harry, too, will be feeling the strain. Not completely step back from his royal duties he had hoped would provide some relief, and has instead perpetuated a series of conflicts that have only made the rift between he and his kin even greater. It is hard as an uncle to not feel a sense of sadness about the matter. The royal family which had been a testament to unity and continuity is now faced by internal feuds nibbling away at its framework from within. Each member has clearly been a victim of, and the emotional price to pay is high, it's already obvious that there are no easy answers. The choices they make in the months ahead have the capacity to shape the British monarch for years to come. Such trajectories are likely to hinge on Prince William's steadfastness, King Charles's plea for harmony and Harry's continued exile from his royal cousins. But the growing sense is that the monarchy needs to change or it will die. But at what cost? William and Harry remain as separated as ever, the lawsuits rumble on, as do suggestions of the terms Meghan would have to agree to in order to come back and all reflect a family adrift in an increasingly tricky, unyielding world. Asterisk a lifelong royal family fan, I wonder what will become of the royals now. Can the monarchy manage to ride out this wave and end up stronger at the other side? Or will these internecine schisms simply foretell an inexorable slide into irrelevance? Time will tell the answers, 
but for now one thing is certain, today's decisions are set to echo down a long valley. Asterisk. The British royal family is amid one of the most precarious periods in its history with long-term consequences for generations to come. The firm voice of Prince William on the inheritance to his brothers yet remains unconcerned with all these obstacles explaining King Charles' effort that tells a lot during hard times on how he wants to reunite his sticks underscore family. Asterisk. There is no doubt that the emotional turmoil of all concerned be apparent, and what decisions are made in months to come is likely to determine the future of the monarchy. Balancing tradition with winds of change and juggling strong personal relationships under the heavy crown of duty, it is an unenviable path before them, mindful of their watching world. Watching this mess unravel before my eyes, I mull over the fragile balance of an individual's rights and duties vis-a-vis -vis progress versus tradition. The spectacle and pageantry is really only the tip of an iceberg that at its heart is about service and sacrifice. When Prince Harry and Meghan did the same, stepping back from royal duties in January to live a more independent life, it was presented as a quest for personal liberty, however, this freedom is both financial and reputational. Prince William, meanwhile, finds himself thrust into a central role as future king balancing his father's expectations with raising his children and all the while grappling with hurt from the collapsed relationship with his brother. If context does apply, then I cannot say which is better than for it and pass judgment on him, but whatever the release of bitcoins in his PS just know that releases are conscious decisions made by someone with a great deal of influence, respect slash recognition slash caution or maybe even fear. Yet the latest stories of Camilla shedding anguished tears now King Charles considers a shock abdication in favor of Prince William paint a royal family in freefall. What they did is that they caused Jaws to drop across Buckingham Palace with rumors swirling around Charles's failing health and Camilla's health problems. The abdication of King Charles III due to the demands and decline of health could be a major blow to the royal family it may even bring them back into the full-time glare of adoring or critical press attention, and highlight them as the new models of an updated monarchy in a way that could change its path from now on. It was also revealed by a royal insider that Charles has been under enormous pressure for some time. Worries for his health have ramped up, impacting on his ability to perform as monarch. The king is 71 years old and abdication has been talked in terms not just of the monarch's well-being, but as a vital choice in keeping monarchy on an even keel for a more enduring basis. Today, but Charles no longer knows what to do with the world of yesterday, one modeled on monocles and Daimler brims, even if he is at once demandingly multiculty and enviably bonkers. And, in the words of someone he knows, Putting his beloved life's work Williams in the hands of those same people is probably just about the best way to do it. Unsurprisingly, Camilla's response to this news appears not about protecting the monarchy but safeguarding herself and maintaining her position of influence. Camilla, who has been known for her drama and self-serving ways, allegedly busted into tears when she heard that Charles was ready to marry someone else. But instead of tears shed for concern over her husband, it seems that what made the dowdy lady so undone emotionally was the threat to the power she had so recently earned. Which is all very upsetting for poor devastated Camilla, as a royal insider tells us, but not because she fears for Charlie's health or the state of the institution. Her worst fear is to be pushed to the side, relegating her status that she's fought so hard to achieve. However, a lot of fans believe Camilla's emotional reaction is a reflection of her own issues. Ever since she became queen consort, she has been busy trying to get herself accepted by the House of Windsor and the great general public. Now, with the ghost of abdication hanging over her all that work is at risk. A palace source said, Camilla has always been very careful about her image and rank within the royal hierarchy. Now, as William and Catherine emerge into the headlines, she is terrified of becoming nothing. But as Camilla worries about where she fits in once Charles becomes king circles are abuzz with speculation he will be indubitably eclipsed by Prince William, the ideal monarch. William comes across warmly as a progressive, modern figure who gets the need for change and will happily boss the institution in unspecified new directions. William represents a fresh start for the monarchy. 
one royal commentator said that he represented a combination of youth, energy, and public awareness. His reign might garner positive reforms and modernization, which is very much required by the monarchy. However, Camilla's commitment to family values and the old way of doing things makes her appear more out of touch with the times than ever. She is by many praise as a seemingly inflexible lady but in this day and age where the relevance of the monarchy is all too frequently questioned, her seemingly aversion to change is criticized by others. Former royal household employees have said that the desire by Camilla to keep things as they are cannot be sustained in modern terms. And Camilla, the very thought of William and Catherine breathing new life into the monarchy clearly rattles her. While Camilla's fear about Charles abdicating is more than the worry of her having a lower-ranking title as queen consort. And it also just comes down to the idea of minimizing the power she has built up over all these years. In the years after marrying Charles, Camilla has become a greater force within the royal family. However, her impact was so closely interwoven with Charles's tenure, and as the monarchy descends from Charles to the future king, William and Catherine for now they expect her role to diminish drastically. A well-placed source said, she has worked so hard to carve this place for herself in the royal family and public perceptions of her could easily revert to how they once were. The insider says it's her family's safety that's a constant source of worry for her not just her own mother who started the SABC debacle but when she's home realizes what she did the nay your mom is Alan Paul, Latek, Mev, Hellfire Mav. September 12th, 2018 in Chai abhor domestic violence. She knows that if the duty-shirking Prince of Wales were to relinquish the throne, and Charles know all too well from his own experience, prior to Edward's birth its life-changing effects, such as his one-eyed determination not to see her moved on. The Duchess is also said to worry that any interview would have ramifications for her family, particularly the advantage it brings to her children and grandchildren given her status as Queen Consort. However the imminent prospect of King Charles stepping down alone portrays a picture that is in very sharp contrast to the one of William and Catherine being seen as automatic successors. There are certainly challenges that would come with the transition. The exit of Charles, now the longest-serving heir apparent in British history at an age when most take retirement, meant a new era was at hand for his royal family, one that might change the institution significantly. A royal expert has recognized how prepared William is for the job. However, this great leap forward will require careful preparation and faultless execution. The monarchy is at a crossroads, and the way it handles this transition is of gigantic importance. Positioning William as the next monarch could modernize how the monarchy operates. So his plans for a slimmed-down operation concentrating on core duties with fewer working royals may be at odds with the traditional views of Camilla and it could lead to further tensions. It is clear that William has high goals and a sense of purpose. The historian explained that William wants to drag the monarchy into the present day and make it relevant to modern society. But not all the family are united in this vision, especially Camilla. The emotional tone of which she reacts in light of the idea that Charles is preparing to abdicate suggests considerable internalization. Another source said Camilla would go to war if William and Catherine did something to challenge her standing credit, Alami Live News Watt has been speculated. But a royal insider warned, Camilla is not going to roll over soon, she has fought hard for where she is now. Looks like it's going to be bumpy ride back in Ed. There are also public perception considerations. While William and Catherine have significant popular support, Camilla is polarizing. She will also be watched closely for how she handles the uncertainty, with any apparent attempts to block William's accession putting her reputation at even more risk. The Prince of Wales' wife was warned to be careful with how she managed the situation by a royal commentator. Though increasingly popular with the public as time has passed, anything perceived to stand between William and the throne could quickly reverse that Goodwill had caused outrage for not living up to the people's princess tagline Smith has famously been quite forthright about her own struggles in realizing this. While speculation about King Charles's health grows, and fears of the next step for the monarchy gets louder. If, as some have suggested, Charles is suffering from a chronic and serious illness, 
his abdication may be fast-tracked leaving the royal family to confront these issues now rather than later. The palace is refusing to disclose any information about Charles's health. A person with Kansas City who disclosed the situation last week on condition of anonymity confirmed that, but added an air of immediacy. Time winds down on men afraid of what will come. There is not yet visible none in this edited commentary from the palace, triggering suspicion that things are even worse than we thought. If Charles were to abdicate due to health problems, it could lead to things like a constitutional crisis, as this one is also getting there. Brooks said in the event of an exit at the top level would be added changes in the family monarchy for many more years. Regardless of these improved conditions for the royal family, one thing is for certain, no one knows what the future holds. Add the anxieties of Camilla, Charles's health and possible abdication to a heady cocktail of instability a melting pot that could hurt the monarchy image of continuity and stability. But crisis is also an opportunity. With a new generation taking over, William and Catherine will be expected to take the monarchy in a new direction. This new guard movement may be a sign that the British royals are starting to paradoxically lean into their out-of-date privilege in a way that more closely mirrors what the public wants and needs from an institution, rightfully adapting within our rapidly changing world. The monarchy has always evolved to survive, commented one royal expert. It feels like this may be one of those key turning points where change is not only required but actually foreseen. Yes, and the question is will they be able to handle this transition with some grace of if it just leads to even more chaos and discord. On the world stage, British royals stand at crossroads. The reality of the nuclear family the question may be occasioned by worries from Camilla, problems of Charles's health and the high likelihood he will abdicate imminently and with it a volatile situation that could recast the monarchy for decades. How they rise and fall against those challenges will influence not only themselves but the course of an institution that has well over a millennium. Obviously, Charles will have to uphold his word in this hypothetical situation but one wonders given the opportunity and as part of a mea culpa shortened anti-crown prime ministerial term how this man would roll back into town? Will Camilla Withering accept her diminished role by then or will she use every ounce of influence to remain at the top of God's Amlin list? It is easy guided mindfulness, it is not rocket science. Will Charles go for the greater good of the monarchy, or will his poor health doom him to carry on? And will William and Catherine be able to effect the changes needed for the monarchy to endure in a rapidly mutating society? The answers will shape the future of British monarchy with a role as unifying figurehead in centuries-old institution or crisis-stricken embarrassment in an ever-changing society at stake. Never, I for one have faith in Prince William and Princess Catherine 100%. As for the media-termed operation bring Harry in from the cold, I'm pretty sure that's made up and comes from a source in America, it instead should be called Operation Decline, the move to overtime. There is a breakdown of several dimensions that need to be established. Harry, who choose to attend Lord Fellow's memorial service at first many have thought it was a publicity stunt perhaps fed by Montecito gossip in preparation for Harry next book titled Spare. With various contrasting accounts and a media frenzy following Harry's trip to the UK, some truth has become clear. Others, meanwhile, were skeptical that Harry attended at all as there was no video evidence of him departing Lax Airport or looking solemn upon his arrival at Heathrow or on the church grounds. The lack of a grand presidential motorcade, snipers' bodyguards' drones and the total absence of public notice in Snexum about the commemorative event in St. Mary's Church gives you a clue that Her Majesty may have agreed with Spencer, albeit reluctantly due to fearsome media harassment that he might otherwise admonish the Princess Diana inquest. Regardless of it being a memorial or a funeral, they have shown time and time again for so many. People said they only learned of the service on the morning that it was to be held at St. Mary's Church in southern Bohol Island. This naturally helped dampen early media interest. Well, sure enough, the media discovered Harry in the crowd. Could know how this information got out. But it seemed like everyone was posting about it on social media. It was on every major news outlet. But the most glaring problem I saw was this one about Prince William growing up. 
I would have to disagree, Prince William has proven himself to be very mature. Harry spoke very harshly about members of his family, but he has made rash accusations in the past, and this covers just over a five-year period. He's gone after Camilla, and he's traduced the memory of Diana. Harry is speaking about Princess Diana more in the last decade than I ever did when she was alive, or years after her death. And he uses Diana as a shield of course and method to maintain himself in the public eye. I am my mother's son. I am continuing Diana's work. I reckon the real issue William will never forgive Harry for his comments about Diana Harry blasted Catherine as cold and snobbish with Meghan. He also shared rove text messages the two with one another Boulain scoffs that William never loved Catherine. He only married her because she was the model wife. But Omid Scobie also echoed this, called Catherine Stepford wife. He also let his principal trumpeter brand Catherine the royal racist, as well as their dad, King Charles. Harry has not done anything to stop the dissemination of such dangerous ideas by bots and their backers. Harry and Meghan we are aware prefer the most ridiculous of allegations to be put straight by their representatives. She may have gone through extensive surgery earlier this year and has been fighting an aggressive form of cancer but Catherine, 51, is still. So in other words, Harry has not publicly denied Omid Scobie's allegations and left the narrative as it is. Moreover, he has expressed a fear and sense of feeling responsible toward Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis that was somewhat similar to his upbringing. I think Harry should be spending more time with his own children, who, for the large part, are looked after by a team of nannies while he goes on countless overseas tours and appearances. If Harry wants to break the cycle of suffering and trauma he often speaks of, this would not be a bad place to start. What an incongruity, if you spend the majority of your time embroiled in various lawsuits against media outlets for ruining your life and all relationships within it. Nonetheless, Harry has shared personal details of people in his family which also paints him as disloyal. He is viewed as a traitor to the crown and his kin, in sharp contrast to Prince William, who remains stoic. This is not the first time Harry has taken aim at the press, with his continued attacks putting tabloids in the dock and causing friction within his own family. Harry has added much stress to the family in recent years, so it seems hypocritical for him to expect his family's support. It also speaks to the complexity with which his fraught relationships play out, as his family are kept silent by the fact they cannot speak publicly in response to accusations made by him and Meghan. Harry, meanwhile has said security is the reason he cannot return to the UK, as Harry has sneaked into Britain under our radar. By deciding to go to an engagement instead of going to Prince Philip's memorial, it does beg the question over why and if he will then run into Prince William having obviously been through quite a bumpy time with him. The Oliver Blunt slash Alan Clark line, the link to Lord Fellows and more outcome-based research suggest Harry had other reasons for speaking out. And he joked that if you could get away from mucking in the British Embassy operating room, snap. But with the help of some alibis, these allegations were not going to take him down. She made no secret of her distaste for him even calling him one of the men in grey suits, despite his innocence. I have since seen that the term men in grey suits is one and the same as the expression used by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle for describing trusted advisors within the Queen's courtiers. Despite retiring as the Queen's private secretary in 1999, Lord Fellows remained an important behind-the-scenes insider by virtue of his membership of her inner circle. Lord Fellows likely had words for the Queen through Megxit, Meghan moving in and all that followed. When Prince Harry took the extraordinary step of criticizing the hangers on surrounding the Queen, implying they were not the right sort, it was a disconcerting moment. He might have been thinking of Lord Fellows. Hence the question, why would Prince Harry risk his safety and put himself at possibly legal riles to drag his family so publicly? Observers have concluded that Prince Harry only does things when it works for him to do so. From his early days with Meghan at the Invictus Games in 2017, many royal watchers have watched his journey pretty much to having married Meghan in 2018. There appears to be an unhappiness brewing beneath the surface for Prince Harry, 
a feeling that what his life has become is not exactly what he expected all those years ago. Prince Harry and entertainment industry, the synergy that never was. Though an A-list celebrity, the actor and longtime collaborator have largely gone unnoticed for his efforts, enjoying minor successes with vanity projects in Hollywood. Instead of becoming global superstars, Prince Harry and Meghan are much mocked figures who are painted as whiny selfish brats who have squandered a chance to make the world a better place. They are greedy, lazy frauds that prey on the kindness of an unsuspecting public. They do not have a strong purpose, depth, or any great feat to speak of other than constantly squeezing Harry's family for cash. Harry is probably more disenchanted with Meghan than he ever was, after all, even compared to his so-called brother's shadow. It seems he is beginning to understand it, if nothing else spending time as a royal family member, coupled with Catherine and William. She was part of a unit then, which is something she can't remember feeling with her husband. She controls, decides, and most importantly has the power. He no longer seems like he is the lost soul, the loner, or that he's just stuck to Megan like her little lapdog. He seems tense, agitated, angry, resentful and sick of her lies. So here is my take on the theory side of it all. However, I am assuming Harry made the trek for it and more to commemorate this service. He escaped Megan's notice. I infer this because there were no tabloid stories, Harry seen at the airport or pictures of his arrival at Heathrow. Everything was kept under wraps from the media as Harry jetted off abroad, and Meghan did not arrange any paparazzi opportunities. I don't think Meghan would have seen that as an appropriate solution to Harry's situation. Or, Harry could have come back because he really does want to return to his roots and charm the public once more. Maybe he told Megan no shenanigans. Just let me handle this. And perhaps she complied. Given that Megan is the same person who seems to have finally availed herself of an opportunity for a public walk, she might not have been able to resist. A leopard, and in particular this one, does not change its spots. Question how did Harry slip out of the country? It is well known, I would argue amongst those who see my work anyway, that I do not think they are reconcilable. They are, though separately as well for long stretches of time. I doubt Harry had words and already knew Meghan would not be pleased so decided he best get out of the country before she woke up to her reality. This is probably why they got the exclusive with People magazine when it became clear Harry was over to the UK again. For starters, there was the beautiful homage Harry made to his late uncle. The next day, and another exclusive from People magazine ran. While at Althorpe, Harry was with his uncle Charles Spencer. Behind the scenes, the Spencers have been working landlock or ranch that will take years and thousands of miles tune line plus on Van Island, one. View online plus on a photo the Spencers have worked diligently in private to mend fences between brothers Paul Rowe Whiteside slash Newspix 13 April 2021 one state through J Records and are redistributed without seeks. View online possibly Torin a lot Sydney Morning Report latest life, gardening this. They are of course aware of William's suffering due to what Harry and Meghan have done, but because they have seen how the Windsors handled Diana on that subject. Comments such as this could serve to inflame already strained relations between Prince William and the Spencers, and are therefore generally better to avoid, given that they cast the prince in a bad light. And details emerged after Harry's appearance, which is presumably following his laptop home or at least conversation with Meghan. But accusations that Meghan may be behind some of the leak risks placing strains on Harry's relationship with the Spencers. So, when claims are made like Harry has yet to sue the Spencers. And we read that the Duke may be keeping in touch with them behind his wife's back then yes, it suggests he remains close to Diana's family, probably as a sort of balm for what is turning into an unimaginably turbulent marriage. The latter is currently in his third marriage and has been through several divorce proceedings. If Meghan feels herself losing her grip on Harry, she may separate him once again from his family and friends and only become a full partner in the world of Meghan. If say publicly revealing this news will affect Harry relationship with Spencers because definitely they are not going to like information out about any memorial events, and its privacy is also an issue of royals. 
If Megan comes to suspect that Harry is getting hurt, she might act to keep his past private and stop him reaching out to this side of the family in order to keep him cut off. And reports that Harry was attempting to mend fences with the royal side of his family began to swirl. Harry is keen to make amends with the royals and do some of his duties again. But this was met with public backlash, dominating discussions among TV presenters and panels. For gathered momentum is overwhelmingly opposed to any notion of return for Harry, with polls suggesting more than 95% of respondents taking a dim view. It seems doubtful that the public will embrace Harry with open arms. A good portion feel the decision is up to the royal family and whether they should forgive Harry. However, any public appearances by Harry in the near future appear to be a no-go. The probably conveyed this message at the same time to Harry. Both Harry and Meghan are known to use social media, and they read the comments, a sign that might have made it abundantly clear a return would not be in their best interests. Theater of Dreams recent reports have claimed that Prince Harry wants to return to the royal family with sources close to him confirming he has no intentions of going back. Harry also seems pretty happy with his situation in Cali spending time with his family, future work and making new friends. His friends say he is content where he is. So perhaps Harry's anticipated comeback isn't about firing back at William and causing more media upheaval, it's simply a stage in his realization that he has found what works best for him without standing in his brother's part of the light. There is simply any draw more compelling than the star-crossed romance of Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, but even that pales in comparison to the happily ever after he covets. Although they suffered the same loss of their mother, Prince William has demonstrated leadership in publicly demonstrating resilience, grace and composure in his mourning. Meanwhile, Harry looks kind of impetuous and selfish in comparison, needlessly unsettling his family. William bears up under Harry's endless complaints about the way people talk about her, by pushing through. Of course, without killing him. Harry's ongoing self-pity sounds like it is probably picking on those old wounds, not letting his brother find closure and ultimately move on. William, as he sticks to his public and professional roles, will also undoubtedly pay tribute to his mother's memory within the rest of their family, while Harry's behavior is nothing but self-serving and inconsiderate. William is committed to the preservation of his family and institution, not scoring some kind of public pity party over airing personal grudges for which he gets paid in intimate tabloids. Harry should take a leaf out of his brother's book when it comes to grace, family loyalty, and resilience. William is the noble one, Harry seems to be permanently mired in bitterness and self-interest. Harry needs to grow the hell up and take a leaf out of his brother's book. Furthermore, Harry's contempt for Catherine only fuels my hatred as she was nothing but gracious to him. Harry cadre avec sa belle sir, elle a tout fait pour elle quiller don la famille et le soutenir en public comme en prive, mais lui la trahi en utilisant leur vendetta contre de la famille royale, réadure Catherine. This would be a completely terrible thing to do on Harry's part. He made her out to be a very bad person, villainizing and trying to take away from everything she did with her husband William, a future king, as though there are no values like family. To make matters worse is Harry's impertinence to expect William to forgive him for all his transgressions, as if his own brother should just forget about the pain and injury he has brought upon him. Harry seems to think he should be able to get away with whatever he wants, all the lies, all the accusations, all the garbage because, wait for it, can't people just move on? But, it does not work like that. The damage he has done to his family, especially Catherine, is not something that will ever be easily fixed. In all honesty, I hope William never forgives Harry as there are certainly many people who will never forgive. He was a traitor to his house, but also a traitor to those who had once had faith in him. He let down the very people that did take care and support him through this most devastating moment. Catherine had never done a hateful thing to him, yet he would trash her image. To expect to be forgiven by fans after behaving like this is an insult, Harry. Well, he passed too many limits and cut off way too many links, for what? Simply to entitle his ego and rob some public sympathy? Alas, 
Harry's actions say much about his true nature and what kind of a man that accepts being supported by people who care about him only to betray them. He ought be hated for it only. Through it all, William and Catherine have carried themselves with composure and grace even in the midst of considerable provocations. Meghan Markle even shockingly claimed, we're only one plane crash away from the throne. This abhorrent statement begs the question, why on earth could anyone in their right mind forgive such an insane and malevolent comment? It would be a mistake to allow this likely sociopathic couple back, in the light of mere decency and respect towards the gratefully welcoming royal family as well as reverence to one another. Meghan is no stranger to using crass and vulgar language for the purpose of pushing her own narrative, she does not care about the lives that will be put at risk by reckless, me-me-me gestures on her part. It perfectly illustrates the depraved mentality that mistake disaster for opportunity, this is who she really is, a manipulating sociopathic totalitarian bitch hellbent on attaining power even if it means people are hurt or killed. One should not forgive someone who perceives the royal family as nothing other than impediments to her ambition. The very idea of Meghan being embraced back into the fold is laughable, given her known contempt for the in-laws that have provided her with a title and platform. There are some lines you cannot cross, lines that you should never draw again, and it's becoming quite clear she has no shame to feel or lesson to learn. It is not only worrisome but alarming for Harry to be obsessing over Prince William and Princess Catherine's children. And for him to make such scuzzy, invasive comments about his own nieces and nephews, who the hell does he think he is? And his latest comments, this time about the children of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, prove yet again that he either doesn't understand or doesn't care where to draw a line within the realm of propriety, averring on his own lot side. He either doesn't realize the of harm his words can cause or else he just doesn't give a damn this is a major overreach for Harry to suggest anything negative or be overly concerned about William and Catherine's children. The filter also fails to see how that disrespects his brother and sister-in-law besides the below-mentioned hidden threat and one I really question if he is sane bar any better, and who would be okay in their right mind allowing such a person, unstable and so delusional near their children? That actually worries me. The royal family must do everything in their power to keep him away from the Wales children. Do not forget that Harry and Meghan have habitually slagged the royal family off with absolutely zero concern for anyone except for themselves. They included William, Catherine, even their unproblematic children in this ghastly public spectacle and it is quite shameful and dangerous. Harry and Meghan have to realize that they cannot talk irresponsibly without consequences, and their incessant push towards victimhood while gleefully throwing Harry's family under a bus will bring repercussions too. The reality is, Harry must keep away from William and Catherine's kids for their own safety. He is entirely unpredictable, and his relentless attacks on the royal family suggest that he can be bought at any time. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.